Dear family and friends in Christ, may you know the rich and amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he has won for us on Calvary's cross. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for sending to us your Son, Christ Jesus. Help us each day to celebrate the fact that we have been set free, free to be your people, free to live as your people in this world, free to share your love with others. Lord, help us always to have this passion that St. Paul had, and the trust that St. Paul had, to trust in you always, to know that you are leading us, guiding us, and directing us. May your Holy Spirit dwell with us always, that we may know your path, that one day we may be with you forever. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Old news. New tradition. Pretty ugly. Icy hot. Jumbo shrimp. Parkway. Driveway. Microsoft works. These are all what we would call oxymorons. Maybe you guys are familiar with oxymorons. There's a category that often shows up on Jeopardy. But oxymorons are words that seem to contradict each other that are put together in order to make a point. As you think about those words, it's, it doesn't just have to be uh, phrases like that. But how many of you have been walking down the aisle and whatever your grocery store is, you picked up a bottle of juice and it says juice on the front, whatever juice it may be. You turn it over and it says less than 1% juice con contained. Doesn't really, kind of an oxymoron, right? Or what about the fact that in order to keep peace, who do we send in? The military, right? It seems like an oxymoron, but a very much a necessity, right? Well, oxymorons, we see them all over in our, uh, in our culture. And let me get to the point here, because there is a point. A lot of people, when they hear Christianity, faith, religion, and the word adventure, they think that they're oxymorons. Christian adventure, faith adventure, religious adventure. They hear those words together, and, and maybe some of you cringe, some may laugh, because when you hear those words, they don't often go together. We don't hear them together. But that's exactly what God intends for us. Some of you, as I said, you might cringe, though, because you think about your faith walk with God, and you don't think of the word adventure. Instead, what comes to your mind is peace or hope, comfort. You think about the fact that my faith walk, walk with God, I'm at peace with that. I know where I'm going. I know where God has planned my life to go. Your hope is already secured. Some of you may cringe. Some outside the church may cringe when they hear Christian adventure because all they see, all some of you see, is Christianity obligations. Isn't that what, how it's painted in our culture? Well, Christianity is no fun. It's full of things we have to do. It's full of lists that they have to check off, full of ways that you have to live. It doesn't sound like much fun. And, then, and worship becomes an obligation. And our time in prayer becomes boring and dull and anything but an adventure. And we, we see these perspectives. And while peace and hope in the Lord is good, we're also meant to live every day of our lives in faith with God. We are meant to live every single day of our lives permeated by that faith in God. We are meant to live every day of our life in the words we speak, the way that we see the world, the way that we live in this world, by our faith in God. And sometimes that will be unpredictable but the only, because the only thing that's predictable is that God will always be with us. It's a promise that he's always there. And when we face unpredictable things in this world, in this life, it means we have to take a leap of faith, a step out in faith. But many of us, we're, we're nervous to do that. We're nervous to step out in faith. We're nervous because it's the unknown. We don't know what the unknown may bring. We don't know what challenges we may face. And we struggle with that. We wrestle with that. And I wonder why that is. Because here today in our epistle, we have this beautiful text from Paul. This text from Paul in Romans chapter 8 that talks about how nothing can separate us from God. Not life, not death. Have you guys ever noticed that? Not even death can separate us. We think about a lot of things in this life that separate us from one another. Death separating us from our loved ones, our friends. But not even that will separate us from God. We have this promise of God. But we're not willing to take that leap of faith knowing that he'll be with us. And look at who wrote it, Paul. He was passionate about this. He believed in this. He believed in God so strongly that he was willing to be persecuted for the faith. He was willing to even be killed for the faith. But what about you? 
when you think about your walk with God and you hear the word adventure, what comes to mind? Do you usually think about a great adventure? Looking forward to what God has in store for you tomorrow, what he has in store for you for the future? Or are you comfortable? Are you content with living life as it is, letting the world go around, right around you? How many of you wake up each morning looking forward to what God has in store for you today, looking forward to the way that you might serve him? It's a hard challenge, isn't it? It's a hard calling from God to us. We're called not just to be Christians in name only, to be Christians who are comfortable and content in our pews, to be Christians who are sitting back and letting the world go around us. But we are Christians who are meant to go out and engage the world because God engaged the world. God sent His Son, Christ Jesus, and boldly and extravagantly poured out His love through Jesus' death on the cross. And He calls us to that same calling, to live out our faith in our lives, to let it permeate us, such that to think about perfume, when someone has perfume on and they walk into a room, it doesn't take long before the perfume permeates the entire room. That's how our faith is meant to be in our lives. It's meant to cover everything, we, the way we think and make decisions, whether the, it's the way you parent or grandparent, whether it's the way that you, uh, that you, you, you uh, grocery shop even, if you think about that, the way that you make decisions in financial planning, the way that you make decisions for your future. Those are meant to be permeated by our walk with God. But sometimes I think we're content to be comfortable. We're content to just let things be. But what does that help? How does that affect our world? The Christian church being comfortable, content. We sit back, and instead of standing up for what we believe in, we allow laws to be passed, decisions to be made, that violate our values, our belief in God, that challenge His promise to us that every one of us is of value to Him, that every life is created uniquely and wonderfully. We're content to sit back. We make excuses. Oh, I don't have time. I'm busy. I, ha I have a huge workload to do. We make excuses. I I'm too old. Let a new generation do it. We make excuses. Well, I just wouldn't know what to say if I was put on the spot. And I'm sure if you think about it for just a moment, each of you at one time or another has had an excuse. You've had something that you said, and well, this is why I can't take that leap of faith. This is why I can't step out and trust in the Lord. But whether or not we like to face it, it's sin. Whether or not we like to take it seriously, it's breaking God's law because it isn't trusting Him fully. It isn't being willing to put everything in His hands to trust that as He promised to take away all our sins and did so on the cross, that He will continue to be with us always. That He will continue to lead us, guide us, and direct us each day. We continue to hear the prodding of the Holy Spirit. But do we listen? Some of us, we, an we answer. We, 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 we will answer with uh, our theme verse for Vacation Bible School this week. And we, we turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, and, and, we, and we say, well, see, this is why I don't do it. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. This is a gift of God, not a result of works so that no one can may boast. Beautiful text. Important text. And it is true. It is by grace alone we are saved. Amazing grace of God. But if you open your Bible right now, you'll find that's not where Paul ends that paragraph. That's where we as Lutherans, we usually end the paragraph there. But if you go on, he includes one more verse. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We have been saved by grace so that we can live free as the people of God to be what He has created us to be. He has created you, you each of you uniquely and wonderfully and differently and, and specially and He is, has an intention and plan to use each of you. And when we serve Him, when we obey Him, when we follow His Word, it brings Him delight and pleasure. 
It doesn't benefit him. It is to the benefit of those around us. But it does bring him pleasure. Listen to the words of Hebrews chapter 10. For yet a little while, and the coming, and the coming one will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. The righteous live by faith. We have been redeemed by Christ and delivered by his death on the cross. We have been set free by his amazing grace, grace that we cannot fathom. Not a one of us would be willing to offer that same sacrifice, but God, our Father in heaven, was willing to give of his own son for us so that we would be free with him forever. And our lives then are meant to glorify him in different ways, in different acts of service, with different talents. Last week, I was blessed with 20 volunteers, almost 20 volunteers, to share the gospel message with our Vacation Bible School students with our Gangway to Galilee theme. We came together and, well, we didn't all know what to expect. Some folks were first-timers. Some folks had had been a little while since they'd helped. Some folks, it's been year after year. But we never know exactly what to expect. But we always put it together and trust in the Lord. And it's pretty amazing when you trust in the Lord. It's pretty amazing because I think if you ask any one of our volunteers, they might tell you it was not a perfect week. They might tell you that things didn't always go according to schedule, that things didn't always happen how we planned them. But what they did see was God at work in the hearts and lives of little children, those in our church and those in our community. I bet if you asked, I guarantee if you ask any one of our volunteers that they would be able to tell you about the way that the Holy Spirit was moving this week, and the way that he was sh- that through our works, not our own, but the Spirit working through us, the gospel was shared. Now maybe vacation Bible school is not your thing. Maybe you, maybe that's what you, where you cringe when you think about little children. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't have a specific purpose and plan and intention for you. That doesn't mean that he doesn't already have in mind something, a way that you might serve him and share the gospel with others. And some of you, you, I I know you say, well, uh, the only time I get out of my house is when I can come to church on Sunday morning. Well, that's okay. Because sharing our faith doesn't have to mean going to a third world country or going out into our community. Sharing your faith sometimes can be picking up the phone, calling someone who you haven't seen in a while, sharing words of Christ's love and encouragement. You know, walking in that faith walk with God can be a prayer. You know, as you lift up your prayers in the morning or the evening, I'm not sure when each of you pray, but lifting up a prayer for someone who you know is in need. Maybe you saw them on Sunday and you thought, boy, they really looked like they were having a rough day. Some of you, maybe God is preparing you to go to the ends of the earth, to go to Tanzania or Zimbabwe or, or, so, or another country that we can't even pronounce. Some of you, maybe God is preparing your heart right now to reach out to people in our community, people in your family, your friends, your neighbors. Some of you, maybe you don't even know yet where God is leading you, what he has in store for you. But this I can tell you is that he does have a plan. And when we, when we trust him, when we are willing to step out in faith, he does some pretty amazing things. When we step out in faith, we will be on in a pretty amazing adventure because that is what our faith walk is meant to be. It's not meant to be an obligation. It's not meant to be a requirement, a, a, a once a week thing, but our faith walk with God is meant to be a daily thing, an everyday experience with God, knowing his gracious love for us, the way that he continues to extravagantly bless us. And he promises that he'll always be with us. But there's another promise that he gives us too. See, as you think about it, 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 things aren't always going to go perfectly. When you go to share your faith, sometimes people are going to slam their door in your face. Sometimes people are going to treat you terribly. Sometimes you are going to fail miserably and you're going to, maybe you'll have that desire to share your faith and, and you won't. But God gives us a promise. And I want you to turn back to Romans 8 in the bulletin with me. 
Turn to that first verse there, because this verse is one, you might already have it memorized. If you don't, it's one that you should memorize. But I want you guys to read this verse with me, because it reminds us of whose plan it is. It reminds us of who is in control. And let's read that together. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. No, Jesus doesn't promise it'll be perfect, but he does promise that he will work all things to his glory. He will work all things to his good. And he gives us that promise that if we take that leap of faith, if we step out there and trust in him, he will do amazing things. Maybe it will be things we witness. Maybe it'll be things that we only hear about later. But God works in amazing ways through his people. And we can trust that even when we are imperfect, that he will make all things to his good. May you know our promise, not only that our God is with us today, that he's with us every day, and that he was not only willing to put those words on paper, but into action. Because he took, uh, took our world and made all things good when he died on the cross for our sins and gave us the promise that one day you will be with me forever in paradise. For God makes all things good. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have called us to be your children, to be your people. We thank you that you have uniquely and wonderfully created us, that you have given us various talents and, and treasures and gifts that, that we might share those with others. Lord, help us each day to be bold in our sharing of our faith. Help us each day to look forward to the adventure that it is of being your people. Lord, we pray that you'd forgive us for those times when we, when we feel like it's, just, it's dull and when it, we feel like there's nothing more we can do and we've lost our purpose. Help us again to return to you, to know that we always have purpose because we are yours. Lord, forgive us for those times when we make excuses. We pile them up and pile them up. Instead, let us ask, Lord, wherever you would lead me, I will go. Fill our hearts with your love and with your passion. May our hearts burn with a desire just as your heart desires for all to be saved. May our hearts burn with that same passion and desire. And Lord, may you send us that we may take that leap of faith and know that our greatest adventure is yet to come when we're with you in eternity. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.